In Suzhou's old town, the streets are very narrow and there's canals alongside of them. So you either take a boat, you walk, or you take a traditional rickshaw like this, which is a really fun way to see the city. Suzhou's old town is much like it was 2,500 years ago, which is what makes it so special. It is both ancient and current. Everyday life still happens on the streets today as it did for centuries. And I was completely enamored by this world passing by from my rickshaw. Many traditional arts that Suzhou is famous for are also still practiced today. Suzhou was a prosperous cultural center for centuries and it attracted artists and supported high art pursuits, including calligraphy. We're at a very traditional tea house in the Garden of Cultivation in Suzhou. And tea and calligraphy go very well together because they're both all about relaxation and just appreciating the moment and where you are. After a cup of Suzhou's famous green Balochin tea, I was ready to dive further into the city's famous calligraphy by taking a lesson from a master artisan. Calligraphy, that is a traditional Chinese culture, and it passed generation after generation. And up to now, we are still have a brilliant history. Nowadays, we use a pen and a pencil to write, uh, but uh, in the ancient time, that is, uh, we all use calligraphy. The word calligraphy literally means beautiful writing, but it is much more than that. In China, it has been considered a supreme visual art, and how one writes is just important as what one writes. When I was five years older, I began to write calligraphy. The brush we use the wolf hair. The paper, we use the bamboo. You see the bamboo over there. We just use this kind of bamboo to make the paper. In Suzhou, we have a special school that is called the Wu School because the Suzhou, the nickname is called the Wu. And they contribute a lot for traditional Suzhou culture. Suzhou's Wu School was actually one of the most premier professional literati schools focusing on painting, poetry, and of course, calligraphy. So I need to work on my strokes because it's very important to have the thick and the thin strokes. And he makes it look so easy. And I have to follow along. This one looks really hard. I followed Mr. Zhang as closely as I could. Okay. It takes so much time to make one character. But his swift strokes were beautiful and controlled, while mine, well, they definitely required some more practice. Mm. We didn't speak the same language, but we communicated through these strokes. I can understand why it takes many years to learn how to do this. It looked like it was going to be easy, but it is not. Some were slow, some were fast, some soft, and some <laughs> used more force. There's a specific order to each stroke for each character as well. Yes, there's a lot to learn. It's okay? <laughs> it's being nice. My family like to do calligraphy from my grandfather to my father and also I, we do calligraphy all the time. So this one means great, this one means pretty beautiful, and this character means Sue, and the next one means Joe, so it's Sue Joe. So at the end we stamp our pieces of rice paper and this stamp is a phrase that he really likes, which means if you are satisfied, you will be happy. And I like that too. I'm gonna stamp. And all master calligraphers sign their work, and this is his name right here on the stamp. And you stamp it. It was marvelous to experience this peaceful art firsthand, and I'm even more impressed not only by Mr. Zhang's skill, but by his devotion to perpetuating this historical craft of his forefathers into the 21st century. Some types of art certainly stand the test of time.